Hi, welcome to the video. This is a 2014 Piaggio Ape Classic 400 and it needs an MOT. So in case it isn't obvious, I'm based in the UK and MOT stands for Ministry of Transport. Vehicles over three years old have to have this MOT test, so an annual inspection before they can be used on the road and the Ape is due its next one. So in this video, I thought I would bring you along, show you what I do as part of my sort of routine inspection in getting a vehicle like this ready for its test because the aim when, for me anyway, when I take it for the test is that it passes first time and we don't have messing about with it needing some work, having to bring it back home, do the work, then take it back again. It's just a more efficient way of doing it in my view. So is this video relevant for you if you're not in the UK? Well, I would say it probably still is because a lot of the points that are covered here are general things that you would do as part of a roadworthiness inspection anyway. There might be little nuances or differences in what a particular country requires as part of a safety inspection, but I'm going to go through the, the sort of things that the MOT covers and how I inspect the vehicle uh, ready for the test. So I'd usually do this outside with the engine running. Today it's throwing it down with rain and I've just spent a considerable amount of time cleaning the Ape here. I hope you can tell. Uh, I'm not quite ready for my lovely gleaming paintwork to get wet just yet. So I'm going to do it as much of it as I can inside with the ignition on but the engine off. If I have to start the engine and I will for some bits of it then I'll open all the doors so we can get some airflow and hopefully keep going. I always like to start with the lights, uh, start with something nice and simple, fairly easy to check. So let's, let's make a start with that, shall we? When I'm doing this, I am checking that they work. I could check the alignment, I guess, but that's often not really accurate enough for the way they're inspected uh, at the test center. So I generally just check that they're working. You can't do every, absolutely everything uh, unless you've got a bit more kit than I've got, but you can do, do most things. These are orange bulbs with clear lenses and the orange can fade over time, but this looks all right still at the moment. Okay, so side lights as I call them and number plate light as well. Indicators. And one thing I didn't do at the front is the hazard warning lights, so all four coming on together. It's all fine. So let's put it in reverse and we have got a 50% success there. Sometimes they only bother fitting them on the near side, so the side next to the pavement. But that, I suspect we've got a bulb gone there, so let's just have a quick look at that, shall we? There is indeed a bulb in there. It doesn't look happy, does it? See, I told you I'd missed something. I was just getting ready to move on to the next section and realized we hadn't looked at the brake lights. So let's see, I have the benefit of my camera being on so I can just flip the screen round on my camera and I can look at these lights while I am pressing the pedal. Let's have a look. Yeah, looks good. Yep, 
Sticking with electrics then. Should have done this before I moved the camera to the back, but anyway, there you go. Oh, that's a strong horn, isn't it? Right, let's have a look at the wipers. The wipers on these things are brilliant. They don't even park themselves, so you have to switch them off at the right place. Otherwise you end up having to drive with a wiper in the middle of the screen. So the squirter works. The, I think the MOT legislation says something about is the wiper cleaning the screen effectively. I'm, uh, I'm gonna say yes for that one. It, it doesn't bend sufficiently at this corner. So there's a little section here that it's missing, but the vast majority of the driver's view, it's, uh, it's clearing. So I think that's fine. While you're looking at the windscreen to see if the wiper's working, have a look for any chips or cracks. The Ape isn't really a fast machine, so I guess the risk of stone chips is, is lower, but it's still, still possible, still possible. This one's fine, nothing there. While we're in this area, then we could check that the mirrors are secure. And they are. Moving into the cab then, checking that the seat is secure. And checking the condition of the seat belt. Making sure there's no fraying or anything, which there isn't. Checking the latching mechanism works properly. Okay, let's move on to the front wheel. Here we're looking at steering, suspension and brakes. So a few stages to this. Check your springs intact. This one is. Check for leaks from the damper underneath. There's no leaks there. Check for any leaks out of the back of the wheel cylinder, just there. Have a good look at the state of your brake flexible hose, which may include sliding this chafe protection back. Let's give it a bend, check it's not perished, check it's not damaged or leaking anywhere. Then have a look at the bushings. Uh, there's one here which looks perished and horrible from the outside. But actually, if we, if we give it a bit of leverage, there's no movement in it whatsoever. So that's absolutely fine. Do the same with this one. If these are really bad, you'd know from driving it. But applying a little bit of pressure with a lever can just uh, identify if there's any play in them and there isn't any. While you're here, have a look at the wheel and the tyre, although we'll do that. We're going to jack it up in a minute. So that screeching is just where the steering tube goes into the cab. So we can check. Both lock stops work, which they do. While we're here, we can give the wheel a spin. Checking for the trueness of the wheel and listening for wheel bearing noise. Another way to check the bearings is to give things a little bit of a rock. There's a tiny bit of play there, but actually a little bit of play, in my view, is preferable to them being too tight. I don't think that's excessive. It's not actually really causing any movement. You can hear it when you're rocking the wheel. There's not actually really any visible movement. 
The other thing, reason for doing this is to check that the brakes aren't binding, which clearly they're not because it's spinning really nice and freely. So while we're doing this, we can check for any perishing cracks in the tyres. More common on vehicles like this that don't tend to cover loads of miles. Check for any obvious damage in the tread. Same check on the other side. And then the other thing to do is to check the head bearings, the steering head bearings. So this involves grabbing the whole thing and trying to rock it backwards and forwards. at different places throughout the steering arc and there's no movement there at all. Also feeling for whether there's any flat spots in the bearings as you're turning, whether they're catching at any particular point and indeed they are not so that's good. Another thing to do while you're here and I, I won't do it because you won't be able to hear me particularly well is to start the engine and make, make sure that you're not getting any obvious revving up or uh, slowing down of the engine through the arc of the steering. That would be caused by the throttle cables being too tight or too loose, usually too tight. And so when the steering's at one extreme or the other, it pulls and uh, pulls on the throttle cable and causes the revs to rise. So that's another thing to check. So finishing off what we started with the steering, let's check that everything in the cab is nice and tight, as in the handlebars aren't wobbling in a direction that they shouldn't, and the grips are nice and secure. There's a little bit of play in and out here, but that's perfectly normal. That's nothing to be concerned about. That's just the way the, the throttle is set up. There's where the front brake hose comes into the cab into a solid line. It goes under the mat and to the master cylinder, which is under there. I'm not gonna take this up and show you that. I've covered that in quite a lot of detail in another video that I did on changing the brake fluid. While we're here looking at the brake pedal then, Give it a press, make sure it's firm, not spongy. This one should be because I changed the brake fluid not so long ago. And then when you're on a test drive, you should get uh, braking force well before the pedal gets anywhere near the floor. This one isn't going anywhere near the floor, even stationary, so that's absolutely fine. The other thing to make sure on the test drive when we're talking about brakes is that it brakes in a straight line. So if you're going along and you slam the brakes on hard, it should come to a stop in a straight line. It shouldn't veer off to one side or the other. If it did, that would indicate, on the, in the case of a trike, that one of the rear brakes is out of balance with the other one and so might need some attention. So I'm now lying underneath the Ape. That's the back of the cab just there. And the reason we're here is we're looking at this solid brake line. It comes to this junction here. So we're checking the solid lines for any signs of corrosion. These look really good. And then the flexible lines for the same thing as before, any perishing, any chafing. This one is, there's a little bit of chafe on there, but it hasn't actually had any real consequence at, at the moment in terms of any wear on that line. And this one is very close to this here, although it's not actually touching it. And then following the line all the way along, let's move my torch. and into the wheel cylinder. Looking for leaks on the back of the wheel cylinder as we did before, and then do the same check on the other side. Final thing to say about brakes then, looking down at the handbrake lever is just to make sure it's effective and it comes on well before it reaches its maximum travel. The easiest way to do that is to park on a hill and see if you can stop it moving. I've done that with this out of the garage and that's absolutely fine. So continuing on our theme of brakes and suspension, we've checked the lines. The only way we can check the effectiveness of the brakes is by driving it really without a rolling road or something like that. Jack the left-hand side rear wheel off the ground. So same again, have a look at the tires.
these have got a tiny bit of superficial cracking just next to the rim but I don't think that's anything to be too concerned about give it a spin sounds noisier because it's turning the drive shafts obviously rock the wheels again there's a tiny bit of play just as there was in the front nothing that I would call it cause excessive and it's certainly not noisy okay so with the wheel off a few things we can get a better look at the first is this shock absorber or damper bushing that looks fine the second is the old rubber donut reminds me of working on uh, my dad's Lotus Silan with him when I was much younger because that has these uh, Rotoflex couplings I don't know if they're still called that but basically what we're looking for is to check that they aren't completely perished shot to pieces and causing a lot of flex and twang in the uh, in the drive line aside from some cobwebs these look to be in pretty good condition this is the the spring which i think is some sort of solid rubber or elastomer of some sort um, I don't anticipate we're going to have much problem with that, but uh, hey, famous last words. Now that that looks fine. It's it's all present and correct, and uh, causing a suitably bumpy ride down a variety of road surfaces. So while we're here, we can do the same checks for those two bushings at the back. There's one at the end of this arm, or this part of the arm, and then there's one at the end of this arm as well and uh, so just get the lever in there I'll do this one so just get the lever in there have a swing on it make sure it's nice and solid not got any obvious play that one looks absolutely fine and do the same with the rear one as well Okay, so it's a new day. We're out in the sunshine. That's because I'm about to run the engine, just to have a look at a few things to do with that. But before I do that, I'm checking around the bodywork. So here we're looking for corrosion. These things love to rust, as you probably know. So any structural corrosion, any sharp edges are a no-no. The eagle-eyed of you will notice that this front mudguard has got a little crack in it here. I've ordered a new one actually, but they're on back order, so for now, I think we're going to be fine. It's nice and secure. It's wobbling a little bit around where it's cracked, but really not enough to cause any issue. Going around looking for any other sharp edges or rusty bits. I've been underneath it already and it's fine from that point of view. I mean, it should be. It's uh, seven years old and it's only done just over a thousand kilometers. Making things like these mud guards are securely attached. So just having a look at the number plate then, and I've chosen to obscure this for hopefully obvious reasons. The number plate needs to be of the correct size with the correct size font and with the correct spacing. Shouldn't be too much in the way of cracks or delamination. I've, I've had minor ones pass fine in the past, but just if it gets to the point where it can't be read either by a person or by ANPR, then I think it's uh, it's time to change it. We've already checked the number plate uh, illumination as well. Now we turn our attention to the engine bay. So what am I looking for here? I'm looking for leaks. So let's go through a few different things. Oil, it's, it's bound to have oil leaks, isn't it? Uh, in case you don't know what I mean by that, then uh, I think an oil leak is fairly common on these things. But a little bit of wet on the uh, on the under tray is, is different to it hosing out all over the uh, ground and causing a hazard which this one isn't so then we're looking for fuel leaks you can usually tell that if there's a fuel leak by the smell before you actually see it so just having a look around all the lines I'm looking for any chafed wires 
and control cables. And this looks fine. Check the oil if you uh, if you haven't done it recently while you're here. I've just checked this a few days ago, so it doesn't need doing again right now. Looking at the engine mounts as well. I don't actually know off the top of my head if they're an MOT item or not. Uh, I suspect they are, but I'll I'll check and put that in uh, in some text at the bottom of the video, depending on what I find. Okay, we haven't really talked about the fuel lines outside the engine bay. So these ones go under here to the tank. So hopefully it goes without saying that the tank needs to be secure and not leaking, particularly not leaking any diesel from the filler cap. And this one is absolutely fine. As I said before, you'd usually smell it quite quickly if it was leaking. So then the other thing to look for is exhaust leaks. I'm just going to move my camera off the uh, load bed of the Ape for that because the vibration may well knock it over and I really don't want that to happen. So I don't know whether you'll be able to hear me or not but I'll give it a go. With the engine running, just feeling around. All of these joints. If there's a really bad leak, you'll see soot. Got to do it quite quickly before it gets too hot. And it's also confused by the fact that there's a fan draft that way from the fan down there. Okay, that's how I check a Piaggio Ape ready for its MOT test. I hope it's been helpful. I hope I've covered everything. Let me know if you think I've missed anything in the comments below and apologies in advance if I have. But as I say, that's the sort of checks I go through. Uh, it's a little bit harder to make a video of it than it is to just go for it in my own uh, process. But uh, that, that's my issue, not yours. I'm going to take it for an MOT next week and I will post the result after this bit of the video. Okay, I'm back from the MOT testing station with good news. It passed and even better than that, it passed with no advisories. So, well done Ape, thank you very much. That's it for this video then. I hope it was useful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you again for the next one. Bye for now.